Good afternoon. Let's review a few of the strategic questions from exam two and reinforce the concepts and ideas uh, to prepare you for exam or the final exam. And we're gonna do uh, the trajectory matching problem, um, the sliding nickel and one of the boxcar questions. And then we'll do the basketball uh, downward, speed, downward speed brain burner. All right, trajectory matching. There's two trajectories, and, and this is really a question about um, the trajectory, the geometry of the trajectory, and the kinetic energy states uh, of the, uh, you know, along the trajectory, uh, specifically at apogee. So uh, we have two different trajectories, the pop-up and the home run. Um, and the apogees uh, are at A1 for the pop-up. It's straight up and straight back down. And then for the home run, it's at A2. And I made them the same height. Uh, and, uh, but the, the home run, it's on the way out to the bleachers, uh, which is point B. Um, now, the questions that we're going to ask are, um, which one has zero kinetic energy at apogee? Which one uh, has positive kinetic energy but minimum uh, at apogee? And uh, which one has minimum at apogee but negative kinetic energy? All right now, let's take a look at the uh, different uh, uh, apogee points. Okay, this one here for the pop-up, at the top of the trajectory at apogee, the vertical speed is gone. That defines uh, the apogee, okay? Because it starts coming back to Earth. That's the farthest point that the uh, baseball is, or the, uh, the baseball is from the center of the Earth, all right? Now, that's also true up here at apogee for the home run. That defines apogee for the home run as well. You know, where does the vertical speed uh, go to zero, okay? Now, the thing is, up here at the apogee of the home run, you actually still have horizontal speed. So you have a few meters per second of speed up there, which I've represented with this little red arrow. Okay, and I was very careful about making the horizontal size of that arrow here uh, the same size as the horizontal component of the arrow um, halfway up the trajectory that you can see a little bit to the left there. All right, because whatever horizontal speed it has at the start of the home run, it has at every instant of time uh, along the trajectory all the way till it hits the bleachers. And that's because there's no such thing as um, horizontal gravity. So there's no horizontal acceleration, only vertical acceleration. All right. Now, if the vertical speed is gone for the pop up at its apogee, and if vertical speed is all you got, which, you know, that's, that's how you get a pop-up, uh, then at, uh, at the apogee, you have zero kinetic energy. So that's the pop-up. Right? Only the pop-up has that because the uh, home run up there, you, you actually have a little bit of kinetic energy. All right. So let's say that the speed up there is 2.5 meters per second. All right, and then the baseball has a certain mass, and you can calculate one half mv squared, and you're going to have some kinetic energy up there. But it's that's where it's at the minimum. It has more kinetic energy because the velocity arrow is bigger everywhere else until it hits the the bleachers. Now, the last question was where does it have minimum negative kinetic energy? And the answer to this is just look at the kinetic energy formula. Uh, one half mv squared. This is always positive. There's nothing in um, the right hand side of this equation uh, that will ever be uh, negative. You know, v squared is, you know, in, no matter if you, you, you know, if you're, if you have a leftward uh, velocity, you know, like negative 3.3 meters per second, if you square that, it's still going to be a positive number, you know, because negative times negative is positive. So everything there on the right is positive. So this one is never going to be true. So neither the home run nor the pop-up uh, will fulfill that particular question. All right. So this is a question about energy states and geometry 
uh, of the trajectory, the geometry of the motion. Now, the next question that I want to go over, the sliding nickel problem, this was not calculating a stopping time. You, you did have a stopping time problem, but this one's asking simply what direction is the friction force? Consider the motion of a sliding nickel initially at velocity uh, V subscript I, 2.9 meters per second rightward. And I put in a diagram. Uh, this one says make your own sketch. Uh, on the test, it says make your own sketch. I didn't have a diagram, but it's not a hard diagram to make. Here's mine. Uh, it says the mass of the nickel is 0 0.0050 kilograms. Okay. So we can figure out kinetic energy if we need to. Uh, but this one says the tabletop exerts a friction force of size 0 0.014 newtons on the sliding nickel. Okay, the sliding nickel is going rightward. We know that. But what direction is the friction force? All right, here are the options that you could choose, uh, rightward, leftward, downward, and upward. Now, upward and downward, uh, a few of you did choose this. It cannot be correct because that would accelerate it off the table. And so, you know, there's no, the friction force is going to be, you know, parallel to the surface of the tabletop. All right, so these two are out. Now, the next one to consider is rightward. Now, if it was a rightward friction force, um, that would actually speed things up. And that's not what's happening here. We're getting slow down. Friction force is always opposite the velocity. And so if the velocity is rightward, the only correct uh, friction force direction is leftward. And that's because only a leftward uh, friction force will slow down a rightward velocity. Now, 75% of the students who answered this answered it correctly. Um, there was a sprinkling of rightward, downward, and upward, uh, but uh, most people got that one right. Uh, all right, here's another question that I want to go over. The boxcar's brain burner. Now, you had a question here, uh, you know, a boxcar question to figure out the speed which in this case is uh, uh, 1.8 meters per second. And I think most people got that one. Um, but this one was about, um, all right, uh, part of the group of three boxcars moving off at speed V new to the right. Boxcar one is actually slowed down. And what is the meaning of that? That's the question. So the four options are rigidity force from the rail is vertically upward. Momentum was actually not conserved. C, the first law of Sir Isaac Newton was nullified by friction. Just go ahead and knock that one out because that's, you know, Sir Isaac Newton's laws are never nullified. So just go ahead and forget about that one. And then D, the third law interaction force was leftward. All right, now the key factor here is that the new speed um, that boxcar one has it's to the right, but it's less than its initial speed, V1. All right, so it's slowed down. Now, that if, if it's moving to the right, the slowdown force is going to be to the left. The slowdown force comes from bumping into the other two. In other words, the third law interaction force. And so here's your you know chain of concepts here. It's moving to the right. It slows down, and that means that the force acting is leftward. All right. Um, now, a comment about option A, the rigidity force from the rail, uh, it actually is vertically upward, but that's not why it slows down. The rigidity force from the rail is upward. The gravity force uh, on the rail from the boxcars is downward, but those balance. If it's a horizontal uh, track and it's not collapsing or buckling or anything like that, uh, those two cancel. So that one doesn't really have, even though A is true, it doesn't answer this particular question about why boxcar one uh, slows down. So only D is the uh, correct answer for that. 82% of the students answered that one correctly. And then there was a sprinkling of um, correct or, or wrong answers for the other three. All right. So my comment to you is on this one, first of all, that the two boxcars, number two and three, 
they were at rest and they sped up. That's because the third law interaction force for them uh, was to the right. Okay, they got a, an interaction force uh, from boxcar one and they gave an interaction force on boxcar one to the left. So that's how Newton's third law works. All right, now you see this kind of thing all the time. You know, like if you're looking at bumper cars at the fair or something like that, you see this every day, but you know, you, you want to ask yourself a question. Do you see it like Sir Isaac Newton? This is how Sir Isaac Newton would look at it. All right, let's go to the last problem. Uh, and what we're gonna do here is calculate the downward speed brain burner, which was toward the end of the um, exam. And uh, to do this, we're actually going to trot through the other five uh, basketball questions. There were six of them all kind of chained together. So let's just work it out. Now, here's the drop table. And this is was given to you in the question itself. And kinetic energy is zero at 3.5 meters of height. And gravitational potential energy is zero down at the floor, 0, 0.00 meters height. And that tells us a lot. We're going to use that as leverage to figure out everything else about this uh, particular basketball. Now, what we're trying to do is figure out the, the speed at 2.50 meters height. All right, that's the uh, fifth column. Now, we're going to fill that one in. Uh, but we got to do a little bit of work first. So let's take a look at this very first um, uh, bit of data up at 3.5 meters. Uh, that means that the object is at rest. If it's zero kinetic energy, that means V is equal to zero, no matter what else you know. So you can just pencil that one in right there. And what that also means is you don't have any kinetic energy. So all of your total mechanical energy, it's all potential energy. All right. Now that means that if we're going to figure this out, we've got to figure out the potential energy at 3.50 meters above the floor, All right? We get that, we'll have everything else that we need to get any other speed, any other kinetic energy at any other height. So let's go ahead and do that. And here's the uh, formula, GPE equals minus MGY. Uh, let's do a little plug-in. Uh, GPE is equal to minus 0 0.600 kilograms. It's the mass of this basketball. And G is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And the position that we're working at is 3.50 meters above the floor. All right. Um, now, if you calculate all that out, um, carefully on your calculator, you get a positive number, 20.58 joules. And so that's the potential energy uh, at 3.50 uh, meters elevation. And that's also the total mechanical energy. And that's true for all elevations. So now that we have that, at one elevation, we got them all. So let's go to this next table. And we'll just, you know, fill it in, dildo marks all the way down, 20.58 all the way down to the bottom. All right, so we got that column, and uh, let's take a look down here at the bottom uh, just for a moment. Um, potential energy is zero down here, minus mgy is equal to zero, when y is equal to zero. So that means that all the energy is kinetic, all right? Now, that means that the total energy is 20.58 joules, good. So down here, the kinetic energy is 20.58 joules. Now that's nice because th that is equal to one half mv squared. So if I want to figure out the speed down there just before impact, yeah, I can do it with the one half mv squared. Now we're not going to figure out the speed down there for this problem, although you could. Uh, what we're going to do is this intermediate elevation, uh, 2.50, and so what we're going to do is just keep in mind that here uh, we've dropped one meter. So the GPE up here is at, at 2.5 meters 
is a little bit less than GPE at Apogee. So we've, we've dropped a little bit. And that's converted over into kinetic energy. Now we still have a total of 20.58. All right. So what we're going to do is calculate this baby. All right. We already did it up at 3.5. We could do it again at 2.5. All right. And then we're going to do a little arithmetic and figure out the kinetic energy. All right. Now it's not going to be zero. And it's not going to be 20.58. It's going to be somewhere in between. We'll figure it out in a second. And then once we get that kinetic energy, we'll be able to plug that into the 1 half mv squared formula and figure out the, uh, the downward speed. That's our objective. All right, so those are the three things that we're going to do. Uh, let's work out the details now. First of all, uh, let's get GPE at elevation 2.50 meters. Here we go. All right, there's my formula, GPE equals minus mgy. And my plugins, just like before, except uh, uh, y is equal to 2.50 meters. So that means I've got a little bit less GPE. It works out to 14.7. Good. All right. Now, I can put that into my table. I mean, if you're doing this on a table, I mean, you do it on your calculator. Or, um, just keep it all in there and, you know, keep your number straight and everything, but I'm, I'm kind of laying it all out. Let's go back to the table. Here it is, 14.70. All right, now that plus kinetic energy equals 20.58. So all we got to do is subtract 14.70 from 20.58, and that gives us 5.88 joules of kinetic energy at 2.5. So we're a little bit more than zero, but we're not, we're quite a bit below 20.58, but 25.20.58 20 is all the way down there at the, uh, just before impact at y equals zero. So, but we got a little bit of kinetic energy over here. So we can now use uh, the one half MV squared formula. And that's going to be equal to 5.88 joules. And we'll be able to figure out V squared and, and then get V uh, and that'll give us our downward speed. All right. So let's do a plug in here. Right. One half mv squared equals 5.88 joules. Now I'm going to convert that joules into fundamental units, kilogram meters squared per second squared. Now both of those are correct. Both of those are lovely. They're both true. Uh, but kilogram meters squared per second squared is nice because it'll help me cancel. Now I plugged in 0 0.60 zero kilograms for the mass here. So I have one half mv squared, and that turns into one half times 0 0.600 kilograms times v squared, which is what I'm trying to figure out. And then I have an equal sign and then 5.88. Now, and we've got kilograms on both sides. So bing, let's just burn those babies out of there. All right. Now that's going to leave meter squared per second squared on the right. And a bunch of numbers over on the left. So here's what it looks like on the left. 0 0.300 times V squared. And then 5.88 meters squared per second squared. So that's looking good. You know, I'm trying to find the square of a speed. So my units uh, need to be meters squared per second squared, which they are. So now I just got to divide both sides by 0 0.300. Uh, so V squared is 5.88 meters per second, meter squared per second squared, divided by 0 0.300. And that works out to 19.6 meters squared per second squared. Now, that is not the answer. That is V squared. We want V. All right, so we've got to square root that baby. All right, so V itself is the square root of 19.6 meter squared per second squared. All right, so you type in 19.6 and you hit the square root key on your uh, rig and uh, you get 4.43 meters per second. And so there's your answer uh, for the downward speed. And that was the brain burner. And a bunch of you got it correct, but I, I know a bunch of you didn't. And this hopefully will help you reinforce how to do this just in the event that we have another basketball emergency.
We've got to calculate stuff on the final. Uh, downward speed of some kind, you'll know how to do it. All right. So that's it for this little mini lecture. Uh, keep working hard. We've got another exam coming up and then a final exam next Friday. So uh, I'll see you later.